Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Slamboat Scrappers. I don't know because that's a really, really nondescript title. That doesn't tell me anything. I have no idea. This is Bioshock. I knew that I was going to be shocked in some kind of infinite manner. This? What is this? I don't know. It is a puzzle game ish mashup. It's got a few different elements in it. It's kind of Tetrisy. It's also got some brawler stuff in it, which is kind of odd. I have to show you it because it, it's a little difficult to explain without kind of showing you the gameplay. It's by a company called Firehose. You may have heard of them because they also made Go Home Dinosaurs, which was a fairly casual tower defense game whereby you must defend your barbecue against the ravening hordes of dinosaurs that desperately want to eat your delicious steak. And also you were a squirrel. I don't know why. This is another one of the sort of smaller indie games that popped up on Steam in the middle of last month. So finally got a chance to actually have a look at it. I intended to look at this before I left for PAX. So, let's have a look at the options menu. It barely has one. At least it has a full screen option. That's always nice, but uh, it's not exactly a high fidelity game, but you should still include some options to customize. You have no idea how terrible people's machines might end up being. Controls. Well, we're going to be playing this with a 360 pad because unfortunately the mouse and keyboard controls are not particularly responsive. I found them extremely unenjoyable to use and I would strongly recommend that you use a controller. Indeed, it's gotten so bad that they recommend it on the actual Steam page itself. This is not that great. I, I really don't like it when that occurs. And it seems to me that you shouldn't be releasing a PC game if that ends up being the case. There are a few different presets available. In this case, Builder Controls, Brawler Controls, Beverage Mode. I I don't really know what Beverage Mode is. I, I think it is designed in such a way that you can play the game with one hand. That seems to be the possibility there. Either, or, either that or it's designed for when you're really, really drunk. All right, let's check out Slam Bolt Scrappers then. You know, it's kind of nice to actually just go back and do a small indie game instead of spending hours critiquing some guy's five-year magnum opus. So you've got two modes here, campaign and battle. Battle is designed for multiplayer. Unfortunately, the game only has local multiplayer, which is actually a pretty huge black mark on it, considering the concept. I think once you've seen the game, you're going to be very disappointed by that fact. It's like, oh, the potential lost. But hey, campaign is where you learn the game and also where you eventually unlock the items to be used in battle mode, such as different kinds of blocks and these characters right here. I don't think any of these characters actually make a blind bit of difference. If they do, it certainly doesn't tell you. So hey, we'll just go with that. And obviously, since I don't have any friends, well, they're not going to be joining me. All right, so in the campaign mode, you are on this island, which is actually entirely pointless. I mean, in terms of an overworld, there was no reason for this to be here. It's actually just confusing, especially in tutorial mode where not a lot of stuff's unlocked. You kind of fly around the island trying to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go next. Just a menu would have been fine. This doesn't really add anything to the game. Now you can pick four different difficulties. We'll start with normal, then maybe we'll ramp it up just a little bit. There is a best times thing available here as well. Okay, yes, that is in fact, was it Steve from Minecraft? He makes a cameo appearance in the game for whatever reason. So what am I doing? Well, it looks a little bit like Tetris, doesn't it? And kind of with good reason. The, oh, damn it. That was not actually how I intended to do things, but hey, there we go. The actual game itself does involve some Tetris block mechanics. You fit the blocks together as best you can, and you acquire the blocks by either taking them from your opponent's character by beating them into a bloody pulp using various combos and special moves, or you beat up the baddies which come in, which is the primary way of getting them. So if we drop that there, that's going to do something. Now, what am I actually doing? Well, as I drop stuff, it's actually going to create weapons for me, and that the, which weapon it creates kind of depends on the size of the block. I really want this power up. Let's see if I can take Steve out in the process. There we go. He is dead and buried, at least for the time being. The different colors of blocks represent different kinds of weapons. This could create a shield, for instance. So I want to maybe rotate the block and start to create a stack over there so that maybe I can make a... Oh, damn it. Nice, useful shield. I, I haven't quite got used to the buttons yet, so I often click the drop button instead of the rotate button. I assume because I'm an absolute idiot. Mostly when I was doing the tutorial, I did it on keyboard and mouse. I was trying to learn that, and I never got anywhere with it. So now I switched over to controller, and it's a completely different beast. You'll notice the weapon sort of firing at the other guy's tower. And depending on your positioning, 
You can also create stuff like shields, which will protect nearby weapons, which is a pretty interesting idea. It's not entirely original. There have been a couple of games. I think there was a game actually on the Game Boy Color called Fortress. If you played that, then... Yeah, you're probably a fairly rare beast because that was not exactly a popular game. Come on, Steve, get down there. There is a block shield mechanic, as you can see there, which is available and rather useful, to say the least. We'll deploy another one of those drill things, I guess. You can also take away your block and melt it in terms of getting some health back. Just Steve sod off. Get back to your horrible other blocky game. Thank you very much. There we go. And the ninjas provide special power-ups, which can be used as well. So that's going to be a repair power-up, which fixes up most of my stuff. Now, you can combine these into larger blocks as well to create larger weapons. That drill launcher right there is so yeah, a fairly large drill launcher that will certainly benefit from me removing some useless blocks, which you can do. You can actually use these transparent blocks in the center in order to remove useless blocks. And then you can either eat them or just put them elsewhere, which is quite nice. Although it is a little bit janky, I've got to say. I guess what they wanted was to sort of use your time and say, oh, you can't just delete stuff. There is more of a punishment to actually deploying your blocks in the wrong place because you've got to go to the middle, risk getting shot at, risk getting punched by Steve or whatever other character. And it also takes away time that you could be spending building. So I guess that makes sense. I think you can probably see the concept by now. We'll play a couple more levels, maybe on a slightly harder difficulty. Oh yeah, this is, I think, a new area. I'm pretty sure I haven't actually been here before. All right, sweet. Huh, something is happening here. I didn't quite get the time to read the splash screen as we came in here. No, I've done that wrong again. Get back here. Let's punch Steve a few more times, try and steal his blue block. The AI is not especially smart when it comes to actually fighting you. I feel a human opponent will be significantly tougher to beat. Uh, drop that down there. I want to know what's going to happen in 10 seconds. I'm extremely interested. All right, let's drop that one down there. Oh, is he swapping it round? Okay, this is interesting. I don't know if that actually serves any practical purpose, but it's interesting nonetheless. So I guess some levels actually have various themed powers and abilities that go on. There's some kind of power bar going on there as well. I think that was, that's for my shield, I guess. Go away. There's <laughs> all sorts of stuff flying all over the screen here. It can get a little bit confusing at times. There's a lot of crazy colors flying around the place. A lot of colored blocks as well as colored enemies. There we go. That's not dealt with. It's a really interesting idea, isn't it? It's a nice mashup of other genres. We don't generally see a huge amount of that. However, it is not without its problems. The main reason why a lot of people don't do mashup games is because mashup games are actually very difficult to get right. Mashup games, generally speaking, end up being inferior in almost all respects to more focused ideas because they try and implement stuff that they either just don't fully understand or doesn't really fit with the game that they shoehorned in there just for the sake of trying to get that concept to work. And I think to some degree that is the case with Slam Bolt Scrappers, although certainly not completely. It's definitely a functional game experience, and it's actually quite a fun one at times. But it does sacrifice a number of different ideas. Like, the brawling system, for instance, is probably the weakest part of it. There's a couple of different combo moves here and there, but the brawling doesn't really feel all that satisfying. It's kind of clunky and not particularly responsive. There we go, I have that gigantic-ass drill. I want the ninja! Give me the ninja, you blocky son of a... This is what happens when Swedes are allowed to create video games. Go away. There we go. I don't think Firehose is actually Swedish, but you get the reference, I would hope. It's got some pretty cool creative design in it. The enemy design in particular is quite nice looking. I, I like that. It's nice and colorful. It's pretty cool and cartoony here and there. Go away, Steve. Thank you very much. Minecraft is the bane of my life. Even if I'm playing other games and Minecraft gets involved in it. Lord. All right, this, this should probably be a good finisher for him, I think. I vastly outgun the fellow. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. A little bit more punching going on. It's got kind of little flip kicks and bicycle kicks you can do are kind of neat. Just, you know, kind of basic combos here and there. There we go. I think I'm actually just going to eat that block. I don't really see any reason to deploy it right now. Unless we should be winning momentarily anyway, I think. There we go. 
The elements do gel together pretty well, although I think the brawling does feel the most forced out of any of them. If it was just kind of a Tetris game where you build up a tower using various parts, which creates weapons, which you then try and build in blocks that make sense, sort of like a shield next to your big gun and so on and so forth, then I think maybe the game would be a more fluid experience, although it would be less ambitious and perhaps a little bit less creative. Looks like we're gonna be fighting a boss this time around, which is an intriguing idea. Uh-oh, that does not look pretty at all. But I think it does work for the most part, and I think it's a pretty enjoyable formula. It just gets frustrating every now and again. It's like, oh, what? I wish the combat was more responsive, or I wish the movement was a little bit more fluid, or I wish maybe there's a little bit more strategy to it. That's what happens when you create the mashup games. As I said, it's, you end up in a situation where puzzle fans might say, oh, well, this is a little bit too simplistic for my liking, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. You get the idea. I was I even supposed to punch that. I really don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I like I like the idea that they were being a little bit imaginative with it. They they created something unique. I don't really know all that many games like this. Unfortunately, I think it's really let down by the fact that there is no actual multiplayer option for online. That really, really sucks for PC users. As you're well aware, local co-op is a nice option to have on PC, but it's most assuredly not the primary way that PC gamers actually play video games. So it's like, oh, you know what would be really good if I could play this versus against my friends? I could have a pretty good time with it, I think. I think the way that the brawling mechanics actually work and the interesting puzzle elements could turn it into a pretty cool party game. And I suppose with the local co-op, that's what they were looking for, but hey, we're on PC. We don't necessarily party all that much, unfortunately. This is not really the console for that, assuming it was a console to begin with. Oh, come on, you're dropping ice everywhere. What the hell's up with that? That's un completely unreasonable. It's fun, though. Basic. Production values are pretty low, and it's, graphically, it's not particularly impressive. The sound assets are just kind of annoying. I don't really find the music to be particularly interesting. And as I said, this overworld map is just... It's ill-conceived. It doesn't really serve any practical purpose. But the core mechanics are reasonably solid for what they are. I think they could certainly use a polish here and there. And they do seem to do a good job of gradually introducing a whole bunch of different interesting elements to the game. And I dig that. I do very much dig that. Oh, wow. Is that... <laughs> that is... What's his face from Super Monday Night Combat? I can't remember his name. The mascot. God, there we go. I'll have some of that. Thank you very much. I'll steal that as well. Is this actually a, a weapon that I can deploy? I guess it is. There we go. Very cool. So yeah, loads of different interesting ideas. Reasonably well executed gameplay. Questionable as to whether or not you should buy it if you're sort of going over single player. There is this campaign mode that does seem to vary things up every once in a while, which I definitely appreciate. And each of these levels does seem to have a different theme and gimmick in, I think, seven different environments. I can appreciate that. That's pretty cool. They seem to have done a pretty good job here. As I've said with Critique many times in the past before, the smaller and the lighter a concept and the simpler a game you're making, the less there really is to criticize. Admittedly, it does mean that if you mess up one of your core mechanics, then people are really going to hate on your game. The brawling mechanic is the weakest part of it. The puzzling is certainly serviceable and fairly enjoyable. And it's a nicely colorful experience with some interesting innovation and tricks up its sleeve. I would like to see them refine this concept and make another one. I really, really would. This is an interesting and effective proof of concept that I think could lead into something really, really cool in the future. And I would like to see more genre melding stuff. I would. It's it's intriguing. Even if it fails, it's an interesting failure. As opposed to having the same mechanics and the exact same design philosophies over and over again in every single game that we see. Currently available on Steam, folks, for $10, 7 pounds, or 10 euros. Its name is Slam Bolt Scrappers, and you can find it right now if you so desire. Also available in a bundle with Go Home Dinosaurs, which, you know, is... It's an okay-ish game. I mean, you know, it's certainly not a game that I would say would set the world on fire. Reasonably competent tower defense, but nothing particularly special. 
But this game's got character and it shows some interesting ideas and innovation. And I hope the Firehose continue to actually do that. Because if they do, they could turn into a really interesting studio. All right, folks, that is me about done for this particular video and Slam Bolt Scrappers. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.